Okay, for this lesson, we're going to do something uh, called Gaussian elimination or row reduction. And I think this is the best example, I think, to use for the beginner people that don't understand Gaussian elimination. Because it is a very, it takes a while to really see how it works. It seems very complicated at first for many people, including me. I mean, first time I did it, it took a little while to just process everything. And uh, the way you have to understand the whole point of Gaussian elimination is, especially matrices, and I'm going to explain this format if, for beginners that don't understand this, for those you know that know it, maybe you can fast forward a little bit. But the whole idea is that when you're doing Gaussian elimination, you're trying to put in this format, 1, 0, 0, 1. What this means here is that, think about you know when you have two equations here, x, y equals something, x, y equals something, right? So 1 means that something's going to be here that's x. So x equals a something, OK? And y times 0 is a 0. So you're going to have x equals something. So you're going to have a solution here, x equals something. Be a 0, y, which refers to this y here. It's just be x equals something. And in the next row, you'll see the same thing. 0, x, so this is 0 here. And then y is going to equal to something. So that's the whole idea of this 1, 0, 0, 1 format. And when you do uh, 3 by 3 matrices, you're going to have 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. And that's what it means to put in this format. But there's uh, two things, uh, there's rules that you can do in uh, row reduction. And uh, I'll try to go through all the rules in this one if it's possible. Uh, one of the first rules you can do in row reduction is that you can switch the rows. Okay, So basically, I can put this on top. Like, for example, 2, 4. 4 and 1, negative 3, negative 8. That's legal. You can switch rows. You can swap rows and you can do that in row reduction. Because the goal is you want to make it into this format here 1, 0, 0, 1. Okay? So some, it's kind of like a Rubik's Cube and you're trying to like play around with the colors and everything until all the colors match. And right now you're trying to make it into 1, 0, 0, 1. Okay? So you can swap them around. That's one of the things you can do. You can swap the rows. Just the rows you can swap. And another thing you can do in a row echelon, which is a Gaussian elimination, uh, is that you can also multiply a scalar to any row. So basically, you can say, oh, OK, I want to multiply this row 2 here by 2, for example. I mean, I won't do anything for this problem. But let's say, OK, let me multiply everything here by 2. So usually the format you write is 2R2, or some books they do 2 with a circle on it. It's up to you. I mean, which format? This one, I think, is I've seen a little more than the other one. But it's, you know, they're both I've, uh, general formats I've seen. So you, if you write 2 row 2, it means that you, write, you multiply everything across. So it will become like this. See? If you multiply everything here, 2 times 2, 4, 4 times 2, 8, OK? So that's the second method you can, you know, se second thing you can do during when you're doing Gaussian elimination, OK? Sounds pretty simple so far, right? You know, you can do multiply by a scalar, and you can swap rows. And then there's a third thing you can do with Gaussian elimination. This is the one that confuses a lot of people, is you can multiply a row and then add it back to yourself, OK? And why is that important is because it's the general way of how you turn them to zeros, OK? And this is really important. Usually my method of doing Gaussian elimination is that I multiply one row and then add it to another, and then it becomes zero. I know you don't understand it yet, but let me finish this example, and you're going to see what I'm talking about, OK? So let's get back to the original problem, OK? And I'm going to use that example, actually, for the, for the first, you know, the, use that uh, method for the first step. And I'll go very, very slow on this one because I know <laughs> you're going to be like, what's going on? I've never seen this before. OK. So what I want to do right now is I want to turn the 2 into a 0, right? So how can I do that? Well, I can multiply. How about this? If I multiply the first row okay, by negative 2, let's say, OK? If, if I multiply by negative 2 the first row, that's negative 2 times 1, right? Which is negative 2. And if I add it back to the row 2, that makes it a 0, right? So the formula you want to use, and this is one of the things you can do in, in Gaussian elimination, 
You can multiply another row and then add it back to yourself, okay? So I would go number two times row one, negative two times row one, all right? Plus row two. But actually, let me write it up here so I save some room. Actually, I want to match it up. I don't have a lot of space. Plus row one, okay? So right now, I still write the same thing on the top. Nothing changes on the top. But I'm going to change this row because I want to make it like this, 1001, zero, zero, one, okay? So what do I do here? Well, actually, I wrote it backwards, sorry. Oops. Whoopsie daisies. <laughs> there it is. Okay. So negative 2 times row 1 plus row 2. So negative 2 times row 1, which is 1 here. I'm, gonna, I'm just working on this one number. Don't, don't get lost. Just do, work on this number right now at the moment. Negative 2 times row 1, which is 1 here. Negative 2. Negative 2 and 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. You see that? Just ask me questions on the comments. You don't understand it. I'll explain it so many times because a lot of people don't understand it. It's the hardest thing a lot of people you know, don't get about matrices. And then now you got to do it on every, every single number now, okay? So negative 2 times negative 3 is 6, right? 6 plus 4 is 10, right? Now you got to do it again. Negative 2 times negative 8 is 16. 16 plus 4 is 20. Do you see that? So I just changed this, this row only. And you can see I'm already halfway to it. You see that? I got 1, 0. So guess what my next step's going to be? I'm going to change this one to a 0 now. Because you want, you always want to do the zeros first. They're the hardest ones to do. And then after you get all the zeros done and match up, the ones are really easy. You just you, you multiply by a scalar and all this, you know, goes the end. So let's do the three, negative three now. So, okay, how can I make this a zero? Well, somehow I, I got to make this a three. So maybe I can multiply by three over 10. How about that? If I multiply this by three over 10. So let me copy the, the bottom row because I know that's not going to change right now, okay? And this is still 1, okay? Um, so let's, how about multiply by um, 3 o over 10, okay, times row 2 plus row 1, okay? Does that make sense? It's 3 tenths of 10, okay, because that will make it a 3 because you have to think backwards. How can I make this a zero? Well, the add of inverse of negative three is three, right? It is th negative three plus three is zero. So three tenths of 10 is three, so that works, right? So if I multiply this and add this, then this becomes zero, right? And the first one, you know, you'll get the hang of it, you know, you'll know it becomes zero because anything times zero is zero and the add one is still one. So now let's do this one, the 20. So what does it say here? I take three tenths of this, Okay, and then add it to, to the, the original. So 3 tenths of uh, 20 will be, let's see, that will be 6, right? 6 plus negative 8 is negative 2. Okay? So we're getting closer and closer to a solution now. So now we got 1, 0, and 0, 10, 20. So now I only have this 10 left, and all zeros are done, right? So now you can just, how do you, how do you uh, uh, get make this a 1? One, uh, one? So... You would multiply the scalar, this is the easiest part. So let's do 1 tenth times r2. So we'll leave the first alone. Okay? And then 1 tenth of 0 is 0. 1 tenth of uh, 10 is 1, right? 1 tenth of 20 is 2. So as you can see, now I'm in this 1, 0, 0, 1 format. And you look at the right side. It says negative 2 and 2. Well, what does it mean? That means x here will equal to two, negative 2, and y is equal to 2. See, it matches up. This is always the y, this is always the x. And if you do three dimensions, this will be z. 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So this will be z. But I'm really working on two dimensions because I want you to understand, you know, the 2 by 2 a little better with this method. It's because Gaussian elimination is very complicated for a lot of people. So I want to, this video is really designed for the people that don't understand this at all and just completely lost. <laughs> If you if you think this is really really easy, then you know this this uh, I have other videos for you for more challenging problems. But that's how you do 
Gaussian elimination and understand try to understand this rule. And I'll explain it one more time because for, for you that don't understand it. So you're trying to always make these zeros. And the, make, the best way to make them zeros is to find a row and you multiply it and then add it back to yourself. So like for this one, I want to make this a zero and I have a two here. So I want to multiply a negative two to the top. Negative two times one is negative two. Negative two plus two is zero. And that's the easiest way. And then everything will just adjust on its own. So I hope this uh, problem helps. I mean, you can double check and make sure the problem, uh, I mean, the X and Y is correct. Negative two here and then two, negative two minus six is negative eight. Yeah, I mean, this is, this, this is good. Let me know if you have any questions, leave comments. I'll try to get through as many matrices uh, uh, sections as I can. Uh, let me know if you have any suggestions. Thanks.